intermarriage or the marriage of the Prophet, peace be upon him, وسلم, to Aisha. Minor marriage exists in uh, Hinduism, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But let's go over some of these rape statistics that did. So he, this is the uh, chart that he showed. Um, and he said, look, India is at a lower per capita rate of rape than Pakistan and Bangladesh. So, you know, if we also look at the rest of this map, we see the United States is way above all of these Muslim countries. We see Scandinavian countries in Northern Europe, way above uh, India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh as well. France is way above, UK is way above, South Africa is way above in terms of uh, rape per capita. So what kind of argument are you making here? If you're saying that, okay, Muslims are higher than India, but we're still way below the West, okay, well, that's an interesting argument, but I need to see more citation. Like, pre please provide, because. The claim was that India has one of the lowest rape rates in the world per capita, and Pakistan and Bangladesh have the highest. He just did a calculation, but where's the study that proves that, that shows that? Please uh, provide a citation. Um, and also, like the, the point is not statistics. So if you notice the argument um, that I made, um, obviously I know that he wasn't responding to my argument, but this is the logical difference here. I point to the texts within Hinduism, the textual scriptural basis in Hinduism for rape and even gang rape. If your gods are depicted in these holy scriptures as engaging in rape and gang rape, or in the case of Brahma, who would try to rape his own daughter, um, then that's going to have an effect on your society. Um, now, if you want to do a comparison with other countries, you have to look at other kinds of co-variabilities and other factors. But I'm pointing to the texts. And in Islam, he didn't point to any text that says that a man can go and just grab someone and rape them or their own daughter, rape their own daughter. Where are the texts? There are no gods in Islam that engage in rape. There are no texts that uh, detail the stories of gods engaging in rape in Islam. So that's a big difference because this is not merely about the statistics. It's about the social acceptance of rape. And that goes back to raping gods. And this is in the, echoed by Hindutva, these Hindu extremists, which have political power in India. And when we look at some of these leading figures of Hindutva, like the founders and the icons of Hindutva, they promote the idea of rape as a political tool. So here is the controversial figure, uh, Maratha, ruler Shivaji, for sending back the daughter-in-law of the Muslim governor of Kalyan, whom he defeated, and he is willing to support rape as a tool, as a political tool. Show me the Muslim figures who say that in India or elsewhere that say you can just go and rape people as a political tool in modern times. This is an Indian phenomenon, unfortunately, and it's a Hindu dva, Hindu extremist phenomenon. Uh, here's another example. Call to rape Muslim women with impunity shows Hindu dva's politics of fear. Vibhanand Giri is heard extorting, exhorting Hindu men to rape and impregnate Muslim women if Muslim men cast even a glance at Hindu girls. So this is the kind of rape culture that is perpetuated to oppress the Muslim minority in India by Hindu dva. These are the leaders, okay? Show me in Pakistan any leader that says that uh, you can go and rape Hindu women. Show me any leader or imam in Bangladesh that says go ahead and uh, subjugate the Hindu minority by raping them. We don't find that, but we find plenty of that when we look at Hindu politics in India today. Today, this is not the talk of a hundred years ago. And then you had this recent outrage from 2022 where uh, 11 rapists who had ra gang raped a Muslim woman were released uh, and they were pardoned basically by the Hindu Dva uh, government. So even when you when these uh, Hindu extremists engage in rape as a, as a tool of terrorism, they are released and pardoned by the government. So that's the level of um, uh, promotion of rape within Indian culture because of Hindu dva. And again, I want to repeat the disclaimer that I made. Most Hindus, the vast majority of Hindus, reject rape. So we're not trying to paint all Hindus with the same brush. 
I'm not even accusing my own, uh, the opponent in this debate of promoting rape. But you still have to address the ex Hindu extremists, the Hindutva politicians that are promoting this kind of rape. And you have to explain the scriptures, the holy texts that talk about rape. Now you can point to other texts that say, no, uh, here's another passage that says rape is not allowed. Okay, that's fine. But how can you worship a God and, and believe in a God who in other uh, authoritative scriptures is described as raping uh, his own daughter or engaging in adultery with someone else's wife? Like these are the gods that you are worshiping in Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, etc. And I gave all the citations for that. Uh, and don't forget, it's not just Muslims, by the way, who are the uh, victims of this in India. It's also Christians. It's also lower castes like the Dalits, the untouchables. Um, he also mentioned uh, rape in the UK. There's more Muslims in the UK and they have a higher rape per capita. Well, this has to do with the immigration uh, differences culturally between Muslims and Hindus. Uh, in Hinduism, you see more stratification between the upper castes and the lower castes. And it's only the Brahmins, the upper castes, that migrate out of India and they go to a place like the UK. So rather than religion being an explanation for the higher per capita rates for Muslims, it's more, it more has to do with socioeconomic factors. Okay, so now let's go to um, minor marriage, which is one, he, one thing that he also brought up. Uh, hold on. Okay, so minor marriage, he's saying this is terrifying in Islam, you know, the Prophet ﷺ had the marriage to Aisha. Well, let's see. In India, um, most of the minor marriages, the child marriages, are being done by Hindus. You know, 6.6 .6 million uh, from Hindus versus uh, in terms of girls and then much less, uh, less than a million in terms of Muslims. Now, I don't attack Hinduism for this. Uh, I've said many times that minor marriage is something that is not a problem. Every culture has had it in its history. If you go far back in your own family tree, you might see minor marriage as well. You're with your grandmother or great-grandmother. I don't attack Hinduism from, for this, but since he has attacked Islam, these are the statistics that I'll point to him. 84% of 12 million children, uh, married children under 10 are Hindus. This is from 2016. Um, you have a long history of very famous Hindu women who got married as minors. Rukhmabai, a practicing physician, age 11, was married in India to someone age 19. Uh, Rinalini Devi was between 9 and 11 when she married Rabindranath Tagore, like one of the leading reformers, <laughs> married a 9-year-old. Um, you have 8-year-olds uh, getting married, 10-year-olds getting married. You have Ushabati Ghosh, 11, was married to Indian physicist Satyendra Bose, one of the most famous Indian physicists. He got married when he was 20 to an 11-year-old. Uh, Rani Lakshmibai, married at age 13. So this is part of Hindu uh, modern history. And then all the... Uh, Many of the scriptures within Hinduism also promote this. So this Skanda Purana, girl should get married before she starts to menstruate. Okay, seven year, uh, Gari is the best and most important. Seven-year-old girl is called a Gari. This is what the Skanda Purana says. Uh, and Devadasi, Devadasi, child prostitution. So I'm completely against child prostitution. Uh, so if you have a problem with minor marriage, then you should have even more of a problem with Devadasi which is happening at Hindu temples. And it's not just in the scriptures. This is actually documented by British historians. They took pictures of it in the 19th century, over 100 years ago. So this is a ramp, was a rampant practice. The British house had to outlaw it. So how can you attack Islam or the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, for uh, his marriage and then say nothing about the Hindu rampant child prostitution?